This video lesson is going to try to explain the extra embryonic membrane. This is a concept that students often have difficulty with, is identifying what is growing inside a uterus besides just a little baby, the embryo. Well, in addition to the embryo, that's what extra means, in addition to the embryo, what else is there? So let's start with a very simple kind of rudimentary diagram here. We're going to draw a little guy. All right, here's our little embryo. I know I'm not a great artist, but there we go. There's our little embryo inside the uterus. So the embryo itself is, is going to be growing, but there's going to be some tissues that grow in addition to the embryo. So if we look at the first layer, this kind of makes a, envelops the whole embryo right here. That layer we call the amnion. Now the amnion is just a membrane that completely encircles and envelops the embryo and it contains the amniotic fluid. The amniotic fluid is there for a couple of purposes. Uh, one, it provides a nice cushioned environment for the baby to grow in. Um, it also helps regulate temperature because it's made of, of water. We get into things like specific heat capacity and, and it, it doesn't change temperature very easily. So it keeps the temperature constant, uh, prevents uh, physical shock from being transmitted to the baby. If, if the mother were to, to fall down. Okay, so it's it's just a protective layer. Uh, the baby can inhale that amniotic fluid and exhale the amniotic fluid, helps to exercise the lungs. Doesn't get any oxygen out of it. There's no oxygen in that, very little oxygen in the amniotic fluid. Uh, the baby will also urinate and defecate into the amniotic fluid, but there's nothing really in the urine and nothing in the in the feces that are gonna bother the baby. So just the fluid just circulates. Now, the next structure we're going to look at, well, we'll look at two structures here. These are two sacs that grow in addition to the amnium. Now, if we look at the one that I've drawn in red here, we'll label this one as the yolk sac. Now, if this individual, if this was a, a bird or a reptile or platypus, kind of looks like a platypus, but we're assuming we're dealing with human here. But if this were, were an egg-laying animal, well, the yolk sac would contain all the nutrients necessary to keep the embryo growing and alive until the egg hatches. Uh, because the human being is a placental mammal, nutrients come from the placenta, not from the yolk sac. So the yolk sac has a diminished role in, in mammals. Uh, essentially, the role may be involved in producing the first red blood cells for the baby, but essentially the yolk sac is considered largely vestigial. Not, it doesn't have the same use and same importance as it would have if we were egg-laying animals. Now, another structure here that I've drawn, this is the allantolus. The allantolus, at this point, it just looks like a sac. It's indistinguishable from the yolk sac in my diagram. Um, but it, it's going to grow into the umbilical cord uh, and the blood vessels that, that are going to lead to and from the placenta. Now, speaking of the placenta, we have to draw the fourth and the last of the extra embryonic membranes, and that is the structure that surrounds the, the entire uh, system here. So we have another membrane that goes all the way around. This is the outer membrane, and at one end of that outer membrane, we're going to have an increase in surface area. We're going to have the growth of these, uh, these extra, well, they're called villi. Now, you may have heard of villi before. Uh, villi are found in the small intestine of mammals and they help absorb nutrients from the, the, the uh, digestive system and into the bloodstream. Well, these villi um, do the same thing. They help absorb nutrients, but they're absorbing nutrients from the endonutrient. So nutrients and oxygen are going to cross the villi, as are waste and carbon dioxide waste and carbon dioxide are going to go the other direction. So basically this is the site of exchange of nutrients and gases, wastes with uh, the mother's endometrium. Now, this structure is called the chorion. Let's get the right color here to match it up. And the villi are referred to as chorionic villi. So we can distinguish them from intestinal villi. 
Now, this is the connection that the umbilical cord will make. The allantois will grow into the umbilical cord to bring those nutrients right into the environment uh, for the baby so the baby can, can grow and develop. And there's a place for the waste products of the baby to go. So the four membranes that we have, immediately surrounding the embryo, we have the amnion. Then we have the yolk sac and the allantois. And finally, the outermost layer is the chorium. So let's take a look at an exam question to see what type of questions could be asked. All right, so here we have a human embryo six weeks after fertilization. Now, some of this looks very similar to what I drew, and some of it's a little different because I drew probably about a three-week embryo. This is about a six-week embryo. So the allantois has had time to grow into the umbilical cord. The chorionic villi have grown larger and, and more involved in higher surface area and are starting to become more the, the placenta. That's what the chorionic villi will eventually grow into as a placenta. So we have uh, descriptions of embryonic structures and functions here. So we're given four of them. We've got provides protection. Now we just talked about that one. That's, that's going to be our amnion. Transports embryonic blood, that's B. So transports embryonic blood, that would be the allantois, which would eventually become the umbilical cord. Part C is used for nourishment in vertebrates other than mammals. Now remember, when we talk about vertebrates other than mammals, we're talking about birds and reptiles and fish and things like that. Uh, we're talking about egg-laying creatures. So that's going to be our yolk sac. And D is the site of exchange between embryonic and maternal blood. So that would be the chorionic villi, or later on at this point in pregnancy, the placenta. So, it says match each embryonic structure is numbered above with the letter that represents its function as listed above. So if we take a look at A, provides protection, well that's going to be the amnion, and the amnion is this layer that surrounds the embryo directly and contains the amniotic fluid. So we can put a number one there. Part B, transports embryonic blood, well that's going to be the allantois or the umbilical cord, so that's what we've got right here, so that's going to be structure number three. Part C is used for nourishment in vertebrates other than mammals. Well, that's going to be the yolk sac. The thing that most resembles the yolk sac right here, that little connection there. I'm going to call that one number four. And lastly is the site of exchange between embryonic and maternal blood. This is the hardest one to make out because it doesn't really look like the diagram I drew. Those chorionic villi would be all in here, kind of arranged like that. Uh, but it's all mixed together with a much larger structure now called the placenta. So chorionic villa, placenta, they're, they're essentially the, the same thing at different points of development. So we can put a two there. So one, three, four, two would answer our question adequately for this one. 